Hello everyone, I am German Selexikov, CEO of Argentum Studio. Today we want to share a unique tool that our team has developed to streamline and optimize your workflow, the custom VDB pipeline. To dive into the details, I would like to introduce our technical artist, Andrei Zhilinkov. He will guide you through all the specifics. Thank you, Germans. Let's dive right into what our VDB pipeline is and the advantages it brings to your workflow. Before we begin, I want to mention that this guide is designed for Unreal Engine 5.1 and 5.2. In the future, after Unreal 5.3, we will adapt our pipeline to the new VDB volume texture asset. Before we open Unreal Engine, we need to install the Unreal VDB plugin from Timbo Lambert and the our volumetric cloud soft fork. You can see how to do this in the documentation in the description. For example, let's take gasoline from the free JangFX library. Now we can import VDB data to Unreal. Drag and drop the first frame of our sequence for import. Choose the compression type FP16 to save disk space and preserve the quality. Select only density on import. If your VDB has flames or heat, import those as well. But keep in mind that in this case we need flames or heat simulation passes, not the temperature pass. Now go to your level or create a new one. Let's remove the existing volumetric cloud component from the scene, as we will have our own. Now go to the Argento folder, then VDB and then add BP AG VDP to volumetric cloud actor to the scene. This is the most important blueprint that will have the most of the settings. Next, in the VDP folder, you should see material instance VDB VC sampling. You need to copy it to your folder to keep the original material instance as a reference. We suggest giving it a distinct name, like the name of the scene. Next, you need to drop a VDB to volume texture actor into the scene. This is the Unreal VDB plugin actor that will render VDB to volume render target. First, we need to select the volume render target. Along with the content, you will have some VRTs with a suffix bis. After that, you need to select the method. If you only have density, you can choose density R8 or R16. If you have both density and flames, then choose density plus temperature R8 or R16. Now we can add our density and flames. Now let's see how it works. Create level sequence to play with the beat volume texture. Let's go to volume render target and see what's inside. We can see that VDB to volume texture actor renders VDB to volume render target. Volume texture has two channels, red representing density and green representing flames. Let's set Cloud Material in Blueprint to the material instance we copied earlier. Below Cloud Material we see Array for Clouds instances. Index 0 is our first VDB. We need to assign to it our VDB to volume texture actor that we created earlier. Each VDB should have its own VT VT actor. Finally, we can see our VDB. Let's turn off the flames for now, so it won't get in the way. Our gasoline is too big for our scene, let's make it smaller. For each cloud you can set basic transforms for your VDB. Let's also turn off the auto exposure, so it won't interfere with our work either. Let's increase our VDB quality. That's better. You can already play VDB in low sequence. You may see artifacts, but in simulate mode and play in editor mode and on render, they will disappear. Let's start with shading. 
first thing we see in material instance is global shading. Here we have three main parameters that affect all VDB in this scene at once, and this is something to keep in mind. Then there are parameters that you can specify for each VDB separately. Let's also increase the quality of our VDB to get a better feel for shading. How exactly these parameters work we'll discuss later. Multi-scattering contribution gives you the ability to control the intensity of the light from our direction light. Multi-scattering occlusion adjusts VDB occlusion. Very often it defines the sense of volume for the VDB. The phase G parameter of each VDB may be unique. It's a bit similar to an isotropy parameter in classic VDB shading. It can be used to control the strength of multi-scattering contribution. Multi-scattering eccentricity affects how much light phase G lets in. But we haven't found an exact use for it yet, but sometimes it does help to adjust the shading a bit. Now we can start to work on the flames pass. When we work with the flames, most of the time multi-scattering occlusion will be set to 2. Let's increase the value of flames intensity. If your VDB has stopped playing, make sure that VDVD has not lost the reference in level sequence. We need to increase the power parameter so that our flames pass does not overlap with the density. The flames have their own density. It should be there, but it shouldn't overcome the default density. Flames should always have a black body gradient. You can make it in flames curve parameter, black body fake. Sadly, Epic Games still hasn't made it possible to create curves directly from the material, so we have to create them in curve atlas. Copy our default curve to your folder, where you have a copy of the material instance for your VDB. Name it accordingly. Return to the Argentum VDB folder and go to Materials. There you will find the Curve Atlas for Blackbody. Add a new area element and drag and drop your copy of Blackbody Curve. You can now select it in a copy of your material instance and you won't ruin the original material. Now with classic density, black body curve, flames intensity and flames power you can get the result you want. There is still space to improve the shading, but let's stop it here. You can see other VDB indices in the material instance. Their indices match those from the blueprint. 
Now let's go through all the available settings for the VDB renderer. First and most important is the sample section. This is where we control the quality of all VDBs. For our convenience we have the bug mode. In the bug mode we can see all the voxels of our VDB. Distance to sample max count and tracing max distance work together. For example, if you set one value to 0.1, then other should be set to 0.1 as well. When you start seeing red voxels in VDB, then there is enough or maybe even too much of sampling. You can still use sample mean count, it raises the whole sampling VDB at once. I try to use it as less as possible because it seems to be more expensive. Let's break down the volumetric cloud to lighting section. Let's start with local lights. I usually do appropriate naming and switch off everything unnecessary in local light for VDB. We have prepared our local light to work with VDB and now we can enable local light sampling. The intensity of local light can be controlled through volumetric scattering intensity. I usually make the intensity of the local light itself very small and increase the volumetric scattering intensity. Let's move on. The next parameter is local light shadow sample count, which adjusts the shadow samples of local lights. Usually the value of 60 is enough. Next is shadow view ray sample max count, which adjusts the quality of shadows from the directional light. The next parameter is distant sky light sampling. In most cases it is better to switch it off as it tends to over illuminate VDB, but in some cases it might be useful. The next is one of the most important sections, volumetric render target. We have a main checkbox that is responsible for whether volumetric render target works or not. This is enabled by default, if you turn off volumetric render target your performance will drop very much, but the quality will increase. I'd advise you not to turn it off, because your render will turn into basically past tracing and the quality can actually get worse sometimes. A projection box constraint gives you the opportunity to get rid of the ghosting, I advise to use it on rendering. Based on our research, the best setting is upsampling mode 4. UV noise scale 0.25 and volumetric render target mode 1. Next is the VDB transform offset section. It can be used to adjust transform again and is available for animation from sequencer. Sky atmosphere for cloud. Additional settings for sky atmosphere interaction for VDB. The cloud shadow map section is needed to set up shadows that are cast by VDB itself. For cloud shadow map to work you need to go into main direction light and find the atmosphere and cloud section. There you need to turn cast cloud shadow. After that the other parameters will be unlocked. Next you need to go to shadow extend subsection and select main directional light for the shadows. The extend parameter needed to manifest your shadows in the world, but it doesn't work without extend update checkbox. You need to pick the best values for your VDB. The values can be completely different every time. Keep in mind, if you don't turn off Cloud Shadow Extend Update, then Blueprint will be very expensive. You must be sure to turn it off after configuring Cloud Extend. If, in your case, you still can see the shadow after setting Cloud Shadow Extend, just tweak the layer bottom altitude. The setting can affect both shadow visibility and shadow quality. When you stop seeing artifacts, it means you're getting the right values. Just tweak until we get the best results. When you have selected best values for cloud extent and layer bottom altitude, you can return to directional light and use the cloud shadow map resolution and cloud shadow ray sample count scale parameters. Keep in mind, they are very expensive, I advise you not to increase them that much. The next subsection, Cloud Shadow Resolution. It is locked and set to the best values, so you can just leave it. All settings are in directional light. 
The last subsection is Cloud Shadow. The special filtering option blurs shadows. By default it is enabled, but I advise you to turn it off. The Snap Lens parameter can help if Cloud Extent and Layer Bottom Altitude didn't work for you to manifest the shadow. Ray Sample Horizon Multiplier can improve the quality a lot, but it's very, very expensive. We advise you to use it in extreme cases. Finally, we're all out of settings. We're left with translucence materials. Initially, volumetric cloud does not have translucency sorting until 15 km. Our soft fork solved this problem. Now you just need to check two checkboxes in the material. Apply cloud fogging and compute fog per pixel. The last thing I wanted to tell you about is the density curve. In global shading you can find the density curve and it will have four channels. Each channel corresponds to the VDB of the similar index. Red is for VDB of index 0, green for index 1, blue for index 2, alpha for index 3. You can use the curve to adjust the density in a more precise way. Just like with the black body curve, you will need to make a duplicate of the original curve and use it. Let's end this video guide with the rendering of our gasoline. To speed up VDB rendering, you can use the console variable R volumetric under target prefer async compute 1. That's all I wanted to showcase today. I hope you found this video insightful. Thanks for your attention. We hope our VDB pipeline will prove valuable for your endeavors. Do subscribe to our channel for more updates and guides. See you soon. Sayonara.